Baby, have you ever wondered, wondered what ever became of me? I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati WKRP. Come on, everybody. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking. Chinatown, up and down the dial. Maybe you and me were never meant to be, but maybe think of me once in a while. I'm on WKRP in... The McElroy brothers are not experts. I used up all my time singing. And their advice should never be followed. Travis claims he's a sexpert. But if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids. So all you babies out there know how cool you are for listening. What's up? You cool baby! Cool start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, and a fine show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your hometown hero and middle is brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary who famously moved away from this city, Griffin McElroy. It doesn't matter. They don't, they don't give a shit, Trav. I pay taxes here. Okay. The streets you drive on, I paid for those streets. By the way, I apologize for the fact that our dad forgot that our audience is collectively 15 years old and doesn't know what the fuck WKRP is. You did help me, you did help me win a bet, though. Yeah, I appreciate that. Did tell old dad wouldn't fly. And that bird... It just lay that on the dog ground. don't hunt. I like that you. I do appreciate that many of you. It seemed took a kind of tuneless guess at how the song ended. <laughs> Cincinnati. <laughs> That'll help keep our dad warm tonight. <laughs> yeah. Local boy made bad. Yeah. Um, hey, bad news. Uh, uh, immediately before we came on stage, right before our dad just fucking bombed so hard. Uh, you know, I cut the intro from every... I'm going to leave that one in. Okay. Uh, you know, Bob, I'm assuming if you don't, half of this show won't make sense. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, Hollywood Nights by Bob Seger was playing, so I was doing a bit of a dance backstage to sort of get ready and involved a sort of uh, uh, like a Ukrainian folk dance spinning maneuver. Hey, Griff, we're actually in like a visual medium right now. Do you think we could get just this quick sample? Well, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Paul? Paul, if you could help us out with a little bit of Hollywood Nights. This probably won't make it into well, the, the podcast, um, but... Okay, this was going to end in how bad the dance was for me physically as a person, but I guess I could... <laughs> Kind of a spin. A spin. Oh no, he fell! He oh, fell no. on the ground! Oh god! Oh god, he fell! Oh, Are you god. Okay? He's bleeding everywhere! He oh, fell he's on the conscious. ground. That's so a- it was a lot like that. Are you okay? How's your bottom? Well, here's the problem. How's your bottom? We'll cut this. Backstage, I got dizzy and sick. Just now, <laughs> my <laughs> butthole exploded. <laughs> So we're, this is going to be a 15-minute long episode because that's how long it'll take for an ambulance to get here. <laughs> I had the realization... My spine telescoped on stage while I was failing to do a Ukrainian folk dance to Bob Seger. <laughs> so that's the worst moment of my life. Yeah, I had the realization backstage, I want to be 40 this year, 
pretty soon this entire pre-show playlist is going to be Bob Seger. Yeah, it's just going to slowly evolve. <laughs> Statistically <into that>. speaking, <laughs> eventually. And um, I cannot wait. So yes, Cincinnati, like the Chilean miners before us, we have reemerged here in Cincinnati. This is where they came out. They dug a sideways hole. And then they Way came. more work than they needed so to do. So much more work, but they love those hard-hitting red legs. So they, uh, they came out here in Cincinnati. Nice. Uh, so, okay, this is an advice show where we take your questions and turn them out. Can be like into wisdom. We're going to do that for you. Many of you sent in questions. We do appreciate you. Hold on. Travis is about Hurry to... Me, please, I boys. fucking knew it. All this peacock and backstage, all this my town bullshit means my we're gonna town. Get, means we're gonna get all the we're gonna get all the fucking Travis segments tonight. Not all of them. Um, this was sent in by Scott McFall, uh, and Scott actually sent this in weeks ago, and I stumbled across it and found it so delicious. I saved it for my town. Okay, so it's been fermenting and going yeah. rancid and rancid. <laughs> Guys, hey dudes, my butt hurts a lot. <laughs> That's the new pin of the month. Okay. Okay. I like any, this riddle begins with, so. <laughs> so, this man is in a swamp. <clears throat> and he is in a boat. And he's about to fall out. He is not wearing a life jacket. So he grabs something hairy. So he does not fall out. What did he grab? <laughs> Do you need me to read it again? I wish you wouldn't, but I so, think you're going to anyway. This man is in a swamp. I could set my watch Dunkey. by this bit. Yeah. And he is in a boat, and he is about to fall out. He is not wearing a life jacket. So he grabs something hairy, so he does not fall out. What did he grab? Now, while Justin and Griffin pondered this one, for those of you who have never heard Riddle Me Piss, welcome. Uh, this is a this was a riddle submitted to the website riddles.com and somebody submitted this and said, this is a great riddle that other people need to consume. Your guess, Griffin. Is it, uh, now you're, you're Googling. Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to say his best friend who is also in the boat with him. I'm going to say Cousin It from the Adams Family. What did he grab? Why? A bobcat's tail. And I'm going to read... I'm going to read this verbatim. Wait, why? What? I'm going to read this. Are they telling a story, like, about their dad? I'm going to read this verbatim. A bobcat's tail. The bobcat is in a tree. P.S. I hope it does not eat him. <laughs> that is among the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> Even to grant this person the fiction... This guy's about to fall in the swamp. Uh-huh. And he's like, I've got a plan. I'm going to hold on to a cat above me. Uh-huh. <laughs> and not fall out of the boat. What this would presuppose is that if you grabbed a bobcat, bobcat's tail, the bobcat would retain its grip on the tree enough that you could hang from the uh, bobcat. There, a lot of things are going to have to go exactly right for this bobcat <laughs> to be like, I got you, Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time you saved my life? <laughs> that bobcat has like been doing pull-ups every day. It's like, it's like the end of signs. The bobcat's like, it's all about this. Saving Ricky. Justin. Oh. My roommate is not a woodworker. And yet, he has taken it upon himself to do work on our wood furniture. Specifically, our dining room table now has rounded and at best Rustic corners. <laughs> Thanks Are we to... using rustic interchangeably with shitty? Uh -huh. yes. uh, thanks to his efforts. Other plans include... Don't put your elbows on the table. No, really, please don't. You will, <laughs> please you don't. will get hurt. It will be Other bad. plans include building a shelving unit above his already wobbly Ikea bed and cutting the couch in half to make two chairs. <laughs> on the one hand, I want to be a good friend. A feeling that is not reciprocated, <laughs> in, <laughs> it would seem, and support his new interest and hobby. On the other hand, I like my furniture without saw marks. 
Brothers, how can I encourage my roommate to broaden his carpentry horizons without sacrificing any more furniture? As from concerning Columbus, are you here? <laughs> that, was, that was actually the sound of them falling out of the chair that their roommate has cut in <laughs> I, it, think, I think referring to a couch that has been cut the fuck in half as having, quote, saw marks on it is being incredibly generous to your roommate. I, what you should do is get your roommate just like a, like a foot of two by four and ask them to start sawing through it. Because if they're anything like me, they'll make it mm, two inches in and be like, oh, wait, this sucks. This is hard. I want to get into a bit of a semantic issue here. You say your roommate is not a woodworker, but I have news for you. <laughs> they, done, they done cut your couch in half. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and argue they are a woodworker. <laughs> Now, quality, I can't speak to that. But you can't deny you have begun, they have begun working yeah. with wood. Wait, sure. So by that logic, Justin, everyone's a bad doctor. <laughs> Explain. I could cut an arm off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, but you don't. Yeah, but, I, but if I did, you wouldn't be like, you're the lowest rung on doctor ladder. Yeah, but he did. <laughs> if I throw a knife at a cow, I'm not a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay, but I'm assuming they put arms back on the couch halves to make chairs, right? You're assuming a lot. Yeah, it's being very, so again, generous. I would have, in this fiction, you have sewn another different arm onto your friend, and I guess... To continue the metaphor, sewn two arms on. Yeah. <laughs> to just make him a little more kick ass, like a cool three arm friend. Yeah. Right. I cut my friend in half to have two friends. Yeah. <laughs> now, would, that would, now that would be a butcher. I would love to get an Excel spreadsheet from your roommate of how all of the furniture math in the world breaks down. Yeah. For example, half a couch, as we all know, is two chairs. What's half, ha half, half a, a chair. Half a chair. Now we're talking about four Ottomans. <laughs> each half an Ottoman. Maybe it's a tiny stool for an infant. Right. Each ch in each infant's stool is twelve coasters. <laughs> I uh, I liked my favorite detail in the question is the wobbly IKEA bed because they couldn't even do that shit right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, how about a Yahoo from the Yahoo Answers Service? Yes, please. Emma Kant sent this in. Thank you, Emma Kant. Are you here? Oh, okay. Just, Just a, a big bunch fans, of Emma Kant fans. Yeah, what's not to like? Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Lowdown who asks, how to recover from a horrible sax performance? First of all, it happens to everyone and it's totally normal. <laughs> oh, sax. Yeah. Sorry. Do you, hey, quick question. Do you feel good about that joke? Not right now, but I will later when I tell myself everyone laughs. Okay. You, uh, and, you and Dad can have a cool meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I broke my wrist. Uh, I had a performance tonight, which for me went bad. <laughs> I tried to do a Ukrainian folk dance on <laughs> I hit some notes without really resolving them and had some fumbles while playing. Does that mean you dropped the sax? Yeah, and the other <laughs> team picked it up. <laughs> Started playing competing jazz. <laughs> People said it sounded good, but in my soul, I know better. <laughs> That's going to be the one that keeps me out of heaven. <laughs> yeah. How do I go from here? Because my performances have gone down, and now I think I might not be asked to play again next year. Thanks in advance. Oh, oh see, that's oh. sad at the end. It got sad. You're all in your head. You need an easy one. <laughs> you need to set yourself up with someone who's like never heard sex. What's up? Before. <laughs> so you need to fucking like headline the next Bonner and be like, "What's up, guys? Who's ready for hot cross buns?" <laughs> But it's not bam, actually bam, bam. Ah, I'm so bad at this instrument. <laughs> but it sounds like 
They were doing good before this one. Well, they have been going down. They, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Going down since then. It's all in their head. Yeah. So what do you suggest? Are you just pointing out the question that they already have? No, asked? it's just that they need something to get their groove back. One thing you could do if you realize a sax performance is going poorly, this is what I do, mm. is <laughs> you announce... I'm going to do a really cool one now. This is one I wrote, but only super smart people can hear it. And then you just stop blowing and do stuff with your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody's like, yeah, this is good. And they're all looking around like, I don't want everybody to know I can't hear it. Mm -hmm. Because only the really smart people can appreciate it. Which yeah. now that I say that out loud... Is the conceit of jazz writ large? <laughs> 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 Only smart people can hear this. Only smart people can. I don't want to let everybody else know I'm not smart. Yeah, I like this. Mm. <laughs> I like all the notes they don't play. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> you know, that is not actually that dissimilar from how I got through middle school band, which was just by putting my trombone up to my lips, but then it's going bum 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 and moving my Tr arm wildly. Trombone's the easiest instrument to fake because nobody's going to see somebody going like. <laughs> and be like, they would not work that hard unless they were fucking shredding right now. You could also, if you feel you're losing the audience while you're doing a saxophone performance, just step in front of everyone else and start going, bum, 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 singing it, because you don't know how to play the saxophone. Right, yeah, <laughs> if you just start vocalizing, you can call me Al, that will go so good for you, I bet. They'll talk about it. That's a viral video right there. Now you're famous. Oh, sure. There's a lot of stuff you could do on the stage <laughs> to go viral while you're playing a saxophone, Travis. You Name can three. Try and eat the saxophone. <laughs> Try and make someone else eat the saxophone. <laughs> Pretend like the saxophone's a penis. Pretend the saxophone's a penis is very good. Travis, see, you didn't even need to think very hard to land on that one. Say, hey, everybody, I'm going to see how far I can stick my arm up the wrong end of the saxophone, and then you have to wait for the cops to come and get your arm out of the saxophone. That's funny. How was the jazz concert last night? It's all about the notes they didn't play because a man got his arm stuck in his own baritone saxophone to the fucking elbow. Somebody else came up and cut it off and yelled, I'm a doctor. <laughs> it was dope. <laughs> Fuck me. At the end, he was doing a tight solo and shot his own severed arm into the audience. I will never forget it. He got 200 views on YouTube. <laughs> it was... But it's hard to compete. <laughs> oh, with all the Let's Plays these days. If only he had cut his arm off and hidden it inside a surprise egg or some shit. <laughs> In our high school's local theater... I've been looking for a way to set myself apart as more than just the guy who does... Are you does okay? It. Yeah, it's all right. I just don't... I couldn't figure out why they called the cops. <laughs> <laughs> of all the people to call, the last person you would call... This is I'm, a crime against music. <laughs> this is... Okay. I mean, the fire department does the cat stuff. At right. least they have but tools. In, okay, in my defense, what the fuck's the fire? The fire department's not going to be like, oh, it's good you called the fire department. We're the only ones who have saxophone grease on hand. <laughs> Wait, is it a baritone saxophone? Fuck. We got nothing for you. You should have called the you're fucking gonna, cops. You're going to have to call the National Guard. Yeah. I mean, no one is especially well equipped to deal with this imaginary situation, I grant you. In our high school's local theater, I've been looking for a way to set myself apart as more than just the guy who does lights. I think we've stumbled on one already pretty, pretty definitively. <laughs> yeah. uh, while also trying to deal with the crushing anxiety weight of being on stage. How do I set myself apart from the rest of these theater kids and really stand out. That's from Thespian in Cincinnati. Are you here? See, that's a good start. Yeah, that's bold. You just do you, that from the lighting grid yeah. during shows. You just screamed in front of 2,000 or so of your closest friends. That's great. Oh, no, it's that hooting phantom <laughs> again. Have you thought about phantoming? Maybe phantoming is the way to go. Everyone talks about the phantom. Yeah. You're going to have to kill some folks. Well, okay, hold on. 
I think when people talk about the Phantom, they're talking about the great songs, the delectable costumes. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think they're talking about, like, famous ghost murderer, the Phantom. I love the shit he okay, did. Okay, but I feel like that's the way he gets things done, right? Because otherwise he's just a dude who leaves weird notes. You mean of the opera and not of Billy Zane, right? When you say the Phantom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either okay. way, really. Um, you know, Do you th think that's Billy Zane's most defining role? This is, who, go sit backstage with Dad until you two have gotten this all out of your fucking system. <laughs> yeah. And also, he beat ass in Titanic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, the dropping things on people is good, but I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. Oh, please do, because dropping now... Dropping people on things. <laughs> yes, the, it's now, a crime as I'm stands. Gonna, I want to tweak it a little bit. Drop one of the... Let go of the rope with the lights on it, mm -hmm. and then at the last second, rush out and be like, No, Daniel! And, like, push him out that's of the way. Good. So then you'll be the hero of the school. Now, very thin margin on this one. <laughs> yeah. Because you would, you could also distinguish yourself as Daniel's murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and that begins your phantom in career. You You're have right. To, right. Well, phantoming you have, is a backup. To you hedge to your bets, away. if you could sing a couple selections from Fiddler as you're rushing to tackle David out of the way of the falling light. That would be good, especially if while you're racing to save him and singing, you know, like, tradition! and you get killed by the falling light, people are never going to stop talking about that. Do you think, do you think the way the fan got started is he did accidentally kill someone and then he was just like, put his hand over his face and be like, I better make this a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to beat this as a guy who dropped a light on a guy. It's I'm not gonna, murder, I'm eccentric. It's not murder, I'm whimsical. Woo! I can carry it oh, too. Oh, that guy, he's such a character. He's such a character. This is how it all began. <laughs> Phantom <laughs> Origins. Five words. Truth about cats and dogs. Maybe in this production of Hamlet, Hamlet is a ghost, wears a full sheet, but you're doing the voice for the ghost body. You don't have to be on stage. The ghost is on stage. And also, Ghost Hamlet is a kick-ass idea. Hey, Griffin. Yeah. Do you know there's already a ghost Hamlet in Hamlet? But this one's, this one is different. <laughs> when he does a whole monologue about death, we're going to have to change or cut that. <laughs> to be or not to be, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Just as this guy. And then the Ghostbusters show up and he's like, ah, oh, now I get it. <laughs> They're going to kill kill me for real, real. I have the answer. Uh, I, I'm sorry, guy. I, I, Paul, can I get I'm, my jacket's too hot? Can I get my sweater, please? Justin, quick, which segment could this possibly be? I can't. I'm worried I know. Oh, hello. <laughs> I didn't Fuck see you come off. in there. I was just about to ask my brothers a little quiz. You can't do. <laughs> Would you like to play along at home? Stop. 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 Hold on. Stop the show. Stop the entertainment. How the fuck? I need you people, if you can still fucking lay claim to that title, I need you people to stop for a second. This is going to be a fun one. Imagine you are me or Griffin and your brother just basically said like, you're going to die in 23 minutes. <laughs> and you have to like go on with the comedy show. These questions are all about Cincinnati. Oh my God. The Queen City. This is How the, the fuck do you think this is going to go? This is gonna be like if Alex Trebek was doing Jeopardy and he was like, what's the capital of Ohio? And then somebody would be like, beep, beep, beep. And he'd be like, no, shut the fuck up, not you guys. It's play along at home. And then okay. somebody in the audience starts yelling and he's like, not you either. Which well-known talk show host was the mayor of Cincinnati? Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Yes, the fucking faster we answer these, the faster we can get out of play. We're going to free you. Stay with us. What? We're going to get out of this together. What are the two secret ingredients in Cincinnati chili? Cinnamon and chocolate. chocolate. Was I right? Yes. <laughs> now... Those were the two easy ones. Here's the next four. Four, you say? You hey, hey, hey Trav, that's a record number of questions for this bit. For my town? 
hey, hey. You may want, by the way, if you haven't been recording this on your phone, you may want to just for posterity. It's probably going to be a collector's item. <laughs> and in, also, tra- what Travis just said is tantamount to, in my town, I'll shit wherever I want to. <laughs> Which infamous celebrity criminal was born here on November 12th, 1934? Bonnie and Clyde. Somebody yelled Bonnie and Clyde. You sounded so fucking confident. (laughs) Connie M. Blyde. So close, Justin. It was Charles Manson. Now the two... Hey, hold on. Shut up. (laughs) I feel like... In this region, we got a lot of woo! <laughs> cool. All right, now two fun ones for a change. Greater Cincinnati is home to Vent Haven, which houses over 900 artifacts. What is this museum dedicated to? Puppets. Ventriloquist puppets. I mean, yes, correct. It's the only one in the nation, actually. Yeah. One last one. By the way, guys, I'm going to need more monitor because I can't hear them over the fucking laughter, okay? <laughs> so crank up the monitor if you can because I can't hear This th- is one last Sh- one. Hold on, Travis. I need to get this audio <laughs> issue corrected first before you go on any longer. <laughs> Paul, I need way more monitor because they're busting up so fucking hard that I can't hear Travis's great bit. Thank you, Paul. The monitor is as high as it will go, Griffin. Oh, God. Okay, well, then you clown, you fucking animals are going to have to keep it down a little bit. Because I can't hear Travis, and he's, like, really doing a good job. (laughs) Frederick Bauer, Uh the inventor of what famous snack food, is buried here? Pringles. Pringles, and for bonus points, in a Pringles can. That's correct. My town now. I lay claim to the town. The winner is Justin McElroy. It's time for my victory speech. This show used to be about something. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Within a podcast. Profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Today I have exciting news for you about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Some of you are from Kentucky. And... Crocs. So KFC and Crocs made shoes. It could have gone either way. KFC and Crocs debut bucket clogs at New York's biggest week in fashion. A word that used to have meaning, but now is just a collection of syllables. (laughs) Bucket clogs sounds like a terrible bathroom mistake. Yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken, purveyor of world-famous fried chicken... Oh, is that what they do? ...has partnered with Crocs. I do like, though, that it didn't say, like, super good. Right, <laughs> yeah. It's like world fit. People well know known. it. Yeah. The creators of the world's most delightfully comfortable shoes. To introduce this spring's hottest shoes, Kentucky Fried Chicken Cross Crocs Clogs. Ooh, right off the tongue and into a toilet. I'm going... This is the moment I will describe the shoes for you. They are Crocs. Uh The bottom of them is red and white. Then they have pictures of chicken on them. And then they have two little chicken wings on top. I have not exaggerated this. I will enhance the image as much as I can for you here in in the theater. And then you can enjoy this picture of the shoes. Show me these, show me these bad boys. Show this is what they are. They are shoes of the chicken. Yeah, that looks a lot like you are wearing some fucking chicken right on your feet that you walk on. Right, yes. Oh. Thank you, Yum Brands. Uh, so here's the deal on these motherfuckers. KFC and Crocs partnered to make 
two versions of the limited edition chicken crocs. The first, Kentucky Fried Chicken Cross Crocs Bucket Clog, is a sky high platform avant garde version that gl <laughs> global artist me love me a lot MLMA. What the fuck does global artist? Can we <laughs> can we fucking calm down? Debuted while attending shows during New York's biggest week in fashion on February 11th. I'm assuming Fashion Week is trademarked. The second, Kentucky Fried Chicken Cross Crocs Classic Clog, a classic clog version, fucking fuck, will, will be available for good news, dumb shits, consumer purchase in spring of 2020. Quote, Combining the unmistakable look of our world-famous fried chicken and signature KFC bucket with the unparalleled comfort and style of Crocs, these shoes are what fried chicken footwear dreams are made of. Said what? Andrea Zaholonski, she's the KFC US CMO. <sighs> okay, wait. So Andrea said that sentence. Here's the sentence I want to say with some of my seconds on Earth. These are the shoes that fried chicken footwear dreams are made of. If you've had those, you should see a doctor, obviously. That's, those are not the dreams of a healthy mind. They and feature a realistic Kentucky Fried Chicken pattern because there's nothing worse than people looking at your shoes and saying, that chicken's not real. <laughs> and a nod to the iconic red stripe bucket. They're sure to fulfill all your finger-licking fashion dreams. And they're also the number one shoes to be arrested in for forging driver's lessons. <laughs> if you want to be arrested and dragged from your home in front of all your neighbors for forging driver's license, these are the shoes to do it in. <laughs> Don't forget the sides. This clog also comes with, I'm not fucking with you. The clog comes with two removable chicken scented gibbets charms. Chicken, I need you to say those words again, but I need you to say them one at a time, sort of explaining their relevance to one another. Too removable, and that's probably where you tripped up, because who the fuck would want to take the chicken legs off their shoes? Who the fuck would want their shoes to smell like chicken all the time? Hey, good news, local dogs, I've got someone to hump. And you're going to very much enjoy it, local dogs. This tasty collaboration of American icons a word that used to mean something and is now just a loose collaboration of syllables, <laughs> right. is truly an original recipe for success. <laughs> Fucking success by what metric? As Crocs continues to create new, unexpected, actually, no. Saw this one coming. <laughs> Brand clap. You are the people that made a bucket of food and called it a meal and put a bunch of gravy and mashed potato and garbage in a bowl and we're like, it's lunch. It's not. Your partnering with Crocs makes perfect sense. It's an unexpected brand collaboration. We're thrilled with this bucket list partnership because you wear them before you die with Kentucky Fried Chicken that will bring fans an unbelievably fun and fashionable take on our classic clog, says Terrence Riley. Crocs person that used to have hopes and dreams, I said. <laughs> that it used probably to be, felt love at some point. It used to be about the shoes, man. <laughs> we're, we're honored <laughs> <laughs> to feature this fashion forward style between two iconic American brands at one of New York's biggest weeks in fashion. I feel like I've been stuck in a 30 second loop for about seven minutes now. <laughs> If nothing else, I'm, I'm impressed by how many different ways they've found to say how excited they are about these stinky chicken shoes. <laughs> yeah. um, fa fans can sign up on crocs.com to be the first to receive a reminder <laughs> when the limited edition fried chicken footwear is available for sale this spring. Got it. Those lucky enough to score a pair once available will be killed on sight. <laughs> will be called. Those looking at a score pair will be the first with their backs against the wall when the revolution comes. <laughs> what if 
<laughs> the, next, the next PR release on quick service restaurants is Popeyes lets loose a bunch of mountain lions. Better <laughs> run, chicken crocs wearers. Um, they, and those lucky enough to score a pair once available can share how they're styling their hashtag KFC Crocs by tagging Crocs and KFC on social just in case you want to spread the message that you're a real dummy to a wider audience that is available to you right now on social media. That said, would indeed buy a pair probably for the fun of it. Yeah, um, I want all of you tonight. That's when you leave and you tweet about this show about how great it was. Just go ahead and use that hashtag KFC Crocs. <laughs> hashtag KFC Crocs. Let's get it trending. Let's anyway. see if we can get that up there. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Munch Squad, a podcast within a podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, Uh, damn, yeah. here's one uh, sent yeah, in hit me. by uh, Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Blue Fox Socks, who asks, Has anyone else ever craved a smell? I am currently craving the smell of scrambled eggs, which is a food I don't like the taste of. So has anyone else ever craved the smell of a food? Okay, now what I, I have to imagine that what they're not saying is smell the food and wanting to eat it because, no. yes, that is literally what That's every how human being... smell works. What, what I think they're saying is, man, I wish I was smelling scrambled eggs right now. <laughs> That's explicitly what they're saying, Travis. I get this. Okay. What do you wish you were... Can I ask what food you wish you were smelling? You know, not eating... Only smelling with your nose senses right now. The Bavarian nuts yes. from the cart. You know the one where they have at the movie theater sometime? You smell them, and they smell so fucking good, you can float on this, the stink. Just, like, float along with your nose, like in cartoons. And then when you eat them, they're kind of chewy and not that great. Mm -hmm. And destroy so, your fillings and yeah. shit. Yeah, so that's maybe one where I would crave the smell, but not the taste. But let's talk about the, let's talk about the word crave. You walk into a movie theater that has one of these, obviously you crave that smell right away. At what point today have you, Justin, been like, mm, I like to smell those nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, a, Sid. Hey, a, Sid. Hey, a, Sid. Hey, girls. Be, be quiet. Daddy's talking. Hey, Sid. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about how much I want to smell those movie nuts. Uh, sir, I'm going to need to see your ticket to Dr. Doolittle. No, I'm not here to see the movie. I'm just here to smell them nuts. <laughs> I've already been arrested at this point, I'm assuming, <laughs> many times. For You're letting your my, children out in the car. For repeating my great catchphrase, I've got to smell these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is Robert Downey Jr.'s best joke in Doolittle. Uh, when he's hanging out with that chipmunk? <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. No. He... Griffin, do you ever crave smells? Do I ever crave smells? Why, no, Justin. I can't say that I do. Funny. If Travis? I... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for playing along. Forget at playing home. along at home. I'd be happy if you played along on stage. Travis, name the smell you crave. Well, my dirty little secret is... Here he goes. I kind of wish I was smelling KFC right now. <laughs> you kind of talked it up a lot. Hey, did anybody else in this building at some point in the last 10 minutes think to themselves, I would fucking crush some KFC. Right? <laughs> this I, guy, I find that sure. to be, that is on the list of foods that I like the idea of eating. Sure, yeah, of course. In concept, yes. fantastic. Which, which now I'm thinking maybe the concept is the smell. I like the smell amount of flavor. I like tasting a smell level of the How much food. of this chicken do you want? Just one smell. Just thing. one smell. Of whatever particles can be wafted in the air is as much as I need to consume now with my 36-year-old body that can no longer stomach this fried stick. Right. Hey, guys, bad news. I just remembered candles. <laughs> This. If you could see Griffin's computer, just says candles in 80.5. <laughs> he had it tattooed on his body so he'd never forget. 
John G. loves to smell candles. <laughs> yeah, I don't have uh, candles, guys. It's a, but even then, okay. It's a huge industry. Do you think... Okay. No, but, what Griffin is saying is the end of the bit. Yeah, you can't really... There's no... When you're looking at your collection of candles and choosing one, you are craving a smell at that point. Here's what I want to know, and I've never thought about this before, but now we have this, uh, this audience that I can ask. By round of applause, has anyone here ever been sitting at home and thought, I need to go buy a candle that smells like blank? <laughs> right, okay. From sitting at home, from nothing, you're just like, oh, I wish I had a candle that smelled like hot chocolate, and that's worth going to the store to. <laughs> Travis, I'm a moderately successful podcaster. I don't have to buy candles. <laughs> Do you make them? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> don't. Apparently, uh, they just know. show up at your door like an early edition. You don't need to. You're worry gonna about need it. this candle tomorrow. Hey, Justin, how about another question? I'd love that, Griff. I'm getting married to a wonderful woman later this year but recently learned she often fails the prove you are human tests on websites. <laughs> the other day, after several failed attempts, I had to tell her which photos to click to get through. How can I be sure that the love of my life is not a robot? And that's from hoping they're human from Huntington, West Virginia. Are you here? What's up, are we, River are we, City of you. Floyd? Super quick, are Sounds we... Sounds like both of you are here. Are we related? <laughs> or friends? Did we go to high school together? Okay. No, okay. So you're lying. <laughs> do, you know, do you know Josh Dodrell? <laughs> hey! Uh, do you know... I'll just name other people from Huntington that I know. <laughs> do you know Griffin McElroy? Hey. Um, so... Hmm. Them tests is hard. I get it. Let, let, let's talk about these tests. And yeah. I don't... The, the fucking, Whoa, stand back, Justin. I didn't want to start go. that. When it says, click all the boxes that have pictures of the crosswalk on it, it wants you to click all the pictures of the street that have, like, the crosswalk paint on it. The space above the crosswalk is still crosswalk. That's where my body walks and crosses the street. So when I check that, some fucking computer is like, no. Now which one of us is the computer? Same thing happens to me because it says click all the signs and I do that but then also I think that doorknob means he's a ghost. Uh, wrong movie. Fuck. Wrong movie. That's six cents. But it wasn't going to work even if it did make sense. <laughs> that happens with me sometimes where it's like click all like the cars and there'll be like a tiny little bit a of little a car bit of in the bumper. corner and I'm like does that count? And I won't click it. And then it, that's how I find out I'm a robot. Right. So I'm, I'm staying silent because I don't want to be named in the Seinfeld suit that right. is about to be called against you guys. Sure. Okay, fair enough. Okay, let me take it a different direction. Okay. So what if she's not? Okay. Eh. Interesting. Man, you, them Cylons in Battlestar were pretty convincing. Yeah, you love this um, being, I assume. <laughs> a human, not human, as long as they can... Eat food in a convincing well. manner. And not die like yeah. an AI when Haley Joel Osment ate the salad or whatever and then was like, yeah. it got like, all in his gummy work. He like fully died. <laughs> that movie's what? wild. Can we say if you're designing some like a robot to be a boy, not being able to eat because he'll die is a big whiff. Not being able to take one bite of salad at a pool party, your robot <laughs> sucks shit. <laughs> I. Just make a tube straight down. What do you? It what? doesn't have to go into the gears. <laughs> yeah. What would have made that more believable is if it had been pizza. Because I think even if he knew he was going to die, an eight-year-old robot would be like, hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Fuck up some pizza. Okay. Absolutely. Here, you start by rubbing your finger, your feet, that's what they're called, on the carpet and doing a like static shock with the finger. If they surpass that, that's step one. We're going, and then you escalate it, leading to like the full Blade Runner test. Where you make them watch Blade Runner. Where you make them watch Blade Runner. And if they can sit through the whole thing, <laughs> they're, they have the they're ability 50 to shut themselves years old. Off. Um, robots it? aren't real. <laughs> I do. Now, wait, hold on, stop. Yes, they are. Uh, Toyota can make one that like walks up a couple stairs before it eats shit, but otherwise, robots aren't real. You're fine. 
it's fucking movie magic. So like fucking chill. I I do. You know what I like about the robot test? What? Is that at some point a human came up with that and they're like, fuck yeah, this will get them. <laughs> They'll never be able to identify patterns. I fucking got them, Valerie. Do you think when a computer comes across that, I was like, I know what a fucking streetlight is. I know what a streetlight is. You hey. Me? hey, I've got Google in me. Yeah, I know your social security number. You think I can't find the streetlights? Uh, if computers can't tell what streetlights are, let's maybe not have auto-driving cars. Yeah. Hey, that's right? a good point if they can't identify crosswalks. Hey, you guys do a crosswalk. No. No. Oh, <laughs> Room. No, I don't. I'm a computer. Get out of the way. <laughs> I also can't tell you what a bus is. <laughs> Why is it all car shit? All the tests are all car shit. <laughs> Why are never <laughs> show moments of true happiness? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Find the sad woman. Here's a. Ch- <laughs> Identify the heartbroken child. <laughs> Where's the couple faking it? <laughs> this boy has a balloon. Why is he happy? <laughs> One of these men is envisioning his death. <laughs> what is death? That's a robot voice. That's Uh-oh. pretty good. Very good. Should we uh, do... No, we weren't going to keep talking about this. Just as a robot. <laughs> this is the first time I have engaged with podcast. Hey, everybody, this is Griffin McElroy. Thank you for joining us in the new era of podcasting uh, for My Brother, My Brother, and Me, a uh, lifestyle examination of the human condition. And this is 501. This is a live show. Sure. Yeah, sure. It's a live show. We're out uh, on a boat somewhere for the Joko Cruise, um, like, uh, like that Lonely Island song. You remember? The one that's like, I'm on a boat. And everyone really liked that. So I hope you like this episode. And the first sponsor is Audible. Um, and they are they have books, but not like uh, the books your, your mom and dad read. These are new sound books, uh, spoken word entertainment and audio books. And if you join Audible every month, if you're a member, you get one credit to pick any title that, to, to grab plus two Audible Originals from a monthly selection, and you get access to daily news digests as well as guided meditation programs. That's so much stuff. You get the gift of found time by listening while commuting, cooking, taking care of other chores, whatever. They're not going to judge you for anything, man. You download titles. You can listen to them offline anywhere, anytime. Don't even sweat it. I like it in the car. I, I do listen to it in the car because I can't read a book in the car normally. Because my, where my eyes go for book reading, I need to keep on the asphalt outside. Thank you very much. Visit audible.com slash brother or text brother to 500-500. That's audible.com slash brother or text brother to 500-500. You know what else is red hot right now? Why, Blue Apron. And that's just a little thing I whipped up that Blue Apron can use just whenever they want to. Uh, They've got even more weekly recipes than ever, and so it's easier than ever to eat well. You are going to choose from a variety of chef-designed ready-to-cook meals with perfectly portioned ingredients and lots of flavorful options, and then they're going to send them right to your door in a box. You're going to open that box and then make these meals in 40 minutes or less. Some of them are as low as 20 minutes. This food's going to be ready before you even start making it. It's going to rip open the time stream, so that's pretty cool. Cooking doesn't have to be a hassle. Blue Apron gives you options and makes it easy, taking the guesswork out of dinner so you can enjoy a home-cooked meal. I love me Blue Apron. I love me. You'll never get me Blue Apron, uh, but you should actually get me me Blue Apron because I, I did learn how to cook from it, and it's a valuable skill, and it's a, it's a great box, y'all. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash mybrother. That's blueapron.com slash mybrother. Blue Apron. Feed your soul. Finally, we're also sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is going to help you make a website no matter who you are, what you are, what you do. Are you a jewelry designer? Are you a blogger? Are you a museum? Or rather, do you are you the admin for a museum? Are you a are you a ambulatory, literal living art museum? Because 
I think so. Anyway, Squarespace is going to help you make a website that's going to showcase your work, sell products and services of uh, all kinds, or promote your physical or online business, or, you know, everything else that a website can do. They've got beautiful, customizable templates created by world-class designers. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. They got analytics, they got free and secure hosting, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Go to squarespace.com slash mybrother for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code MYBROTHER to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Uh, thanks again. Like I said, we are uh, on the boat right now, but next week we're going to be kicking off the Max Fun Drive, and we have a ton of super fun stuff planned uh, for that. We got bonus episodes just ready and raring to go for new and upgrading donors, and um, just just a lot of great a lot of great content coming your way. Uh, so we, we hope you're looking forward to that, and we sure do appreciate you. We appreciate everybody who came to this Cincinnati show. Had a real fun time. Uh, I'm doing okay after my terrible spill. Thank you for asking. I know there's a lot of concern. If you want to see what kind of stunts I've got planned for our next live shows, why don't you find out by coming out to a show? Because in April, we're going to be coming to Boston. We're going to be coming to freaking Baltimore. We're going to be coming to Norfolk, Virginia. We're going to be in Mashantucket, Connecticut, just like doing our dang thing. And we want you to come out and see us. There's still some tickets available. So uh, go to McElroy.Family. And uh, if you live in those places or want to travel to those places, come see us cut up. Uh, do that because we'd love to see you. I think that's it. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Goodbye. Hi, I am Lori Kilmartin. And I'm Jackie Cashin. Together, we host a podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show. Uh, we're both stand up comics. We recently met each other because women weren't allowed to work together on, uh, on the road or in gigs for a long, long time. And so our friendship has been unfolding on this podcast for a couple of years. Jackie constantly works the road. I write for Conan and then I work the road in between. We do a lot of stand-up comedy. And so we celebrate stand-up and yes. we also bitch about it. We keep it to an hour. We don't have any guests. We somehow find enough to talk about every single week. So find us. You can subscribe to The Jackie and Lori Show at Maximum Fun org or wherever you get your podcasts okay bye hello hello hey how's how's it going guys good good, good. right uh so i uh sorry what's your uh, oh, if you, you when you come down the mic if you want to give us your name and oh, we'd appreciate okay that. Uh, i'm courtney hi hello i have oh oh you're back okay i have phantom i I have a baby. Oh, congrats. congrats. Well, I, I have three kids, but the baby's the one that matters right oh, now. Oh, well, then so. who's <laughs> Whoa! That's what our parents said, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, that's good for me. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I have a baby and I have to work. So, um, we, uh, I work for The Ohio State University. So, we have a, we have a pumping... <laughs> We Out here a, shelling for your college. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, so we have a pumping room because we're pretty progressive and also legally they're supposed to have one. <laughs> so, uh, oh, we're hip and I, legally. Yeah, legally, legally it's got to be there. Legally mandated humanity. So yeah. I, I spend a good deal of my time in the lactation room nice. sure. pumping my own human milk. Right. So it's, Thanks for uh, saying that in the most normal way possible. Yeah. <laughs> so it's... It's real boring in there, uh, okay. and all I can hear is that <laughs> noise of the pump. I'm sure you're all familiar. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and the real problem is, I've tried to come up with a couple ways that were like fun to help pass the time. First, I tried knitting, but then I needed my hands. Um, sure. And then I tried listening to podcasts or watching TV, boring. but the real problem is... We make you laugh so hard, it doesn't <laughs> happen. Well, no, the real problem is the pumping room is attached to a conference room. Oh, uh, we're a little too ribald for the business. I, I start you laughing. You mean attached like there's a wall between well, them, right? Yes, now, just like, there's a, they can't it, see me, but I... Here's the thing. There's always a meeting in there every time I have to go in. And right. so between the... And the me cackling with laughter. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So is there anything I can do to have fun while pumping my own human milk that's not too loud? Sure, 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 sure. Sure. Super normal question, yeah? It's... Hey, can I say something? This is like our thousandth live show. This is like the bottom 15% of like normalcy. I don't think you have anything to worry about. I also, uh, breast milk and pumping and breastfeeding is totally normal. It's chill. Hey, yeah. It's Listen, good. Hey. Uh, I, we posed this to Sydney backstage, and she said she used to do competitions with another doctor that was also <laughs> pumping to see who could grind out the most. Like they were on an episode of Wild and Crazy Kids. Yeah. <laughs> 
Like it, right, like a while gi- they were pumping, they chased the giant earth ball around. Right, they would they would pump it out. They would put it on a bowl on another kid's head, and he would try to take as much as he could over the beaker <laughs> and dump it out without spilling any. No, they would just have regular competitions <laughs> to see who could get the most milk. Right, <laughs> human milk. You made it weird, not me. <laughs> That's one thing you could do is if there's somebody else in there, just get into a comic, make it competitive. We, we don't share the room. <laughs> what? Don't, sh- don't share the room. I mean, you, you can have a leaderboard. A board. Yeah, yeah something. Leaderboard. Here's what you're going to need. You're just do need- it on Twitch, and yeah. that way there's there accountability. You you're going to need a Rita Hayworth poster and some rock working <laughs> tools. This has been in every episode of the last 10. Did you just see that movie for the first no. time? Okay. I just remember the name Rita Hayworth. Okay, cool. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I'm going to get you out of this business the hard way. So, you're going to have to pump through some horrible sewer tubes. But in the end, what the fuck Mexican are you Island. saying right now? Okay. I know how to keep you busy during breast pump. Uh-huh. You got to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> what about an audio book? Something that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> It's not funny. It's just a thing you could do. Maybe a crossword. You said it's boring, right? It, it's incredibly boring. Yeah. I can, I imagine that is true. So you want to just like get done with it, right? If I mean, do you have tips for lactating faster? I'm about to say, instead of a podcast, shh, I got this. Instead of a podcast, instead of an audiobook. Before you're too mean, remember, he is a man with a broken ass. Go on. <laughs> Why don't you put on, on the cans, on the ones and twos, some Quad City DJs? That's going to get things moving. That is how it works, yeah. I clearly, I didn't think that everybody was going to make such a big deal about it. <laughs> or else I wouldn't have started my great Quad City DJ's joke. You could go uh, Elvis Costello, pump it up. That's a little bit more on... On the nose. On brand. A fushigi, <laughs> but with one hand. One-handed contact juggling. Pumping iron. Pumping uh, iron. Why, that's good. There's ooh. no reason the other hand can't get swole while you're uh, pumping human milk. You've ruined it now. <laughs> Does that help? Hey, how about this? That, what okay. if you just scream and scream at the top of your lungs? <laughs> and then you could be like, oh, I guess the walls should be a bit thicker in the pumping room, gang. And then you can listen to podcasts and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Does that help? Nailed it. That helps. Thank you. Got there. Okay. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Uh, my name's Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, uh, Brian. He, him. Uh, uh, my girlfriend is really awesome, but she's kind of a picky eater. Okay. And she really only likes one restaurant, and that's Fazoli's. Um, <laughs> I so, have never heard a reaction like that in my life. <laughs> it was like one third of the audience was like, fuck yeah, and the other third was like, ew, and the other third was like, so what the fuck is the problem brian i just really don't like fazoli's fucking too good for unlimited free breadsticks bri bri i don't get the breadsticks they're like salty bread it doesn't it's not like i can't work with brian you two can handle brian i'm over here brian let me give you a piece of advice right now Back off the breadsticks. <laughs> Brian, is your significant other here? Hello, where are they? Hello? Hello. Hi, I'm so sorry about Brian. <laughs> I just wanted to share your pain. Go on. Help oh. Brian. <laughs> Salty bread. <laughs> Justin, do you need a minute? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take a minute while Brian's doing his thing. <laughs> my roommates and my friends find that really funny, so every time That's we have funny to, about like, it. <laughs> Whenever we have to find somewhere to eat, they all vote Fazoli's, and so we get Fazoli's like way too much, and yeah. I just never want to go there again. So, what can I do to never have to walk into a Fazoli's ever again? You got to eat the soap, Brian. The problem is, the more you say no, the more you're against it, the funnier they'll think it is. <laughs> okay. So, you're going to have to 
Hey, where is that? Fazoli's! <laughs> I love Fazoli's now. That's... I love that stuff. Hook it up right in my veins. Give me that scary! And when you stop reading the Justin McElroy memoir audio book <laughs> aloud, <laughs> you can then continue your conversation. <laughs> That's how you dealt with bullies in school. If bullies in school were like, what's up, fucking idiot? I'm going to give you Fizzoli's now. I'd be like, bullying is awesome. I like it. Let me get some cyber bullying too. Cyber Fizzoli's? Hell yeah. Fizzoli's is just like nasty Olive Garden, right? It's Which like, is a phrase in and of itself. It's like if Olive Garden fucked, that'd be Fizzoli's. <laughs> So I don't think I'm with on Team Justin here. I do not see the issue. F- f- that's like their slogan, Fazoli's. When you don't want to drive to the mall. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Fazoli's. We fuck. <laughs> Fazoli's. We fuck. The breadsticks are. Oh, they're unlimited. I didn't. You can have as many as you want, right? You know that. They're not that good though. How about the baked ziti? Okay, wait, <laughs> Brian. Even buying into your point, even if they weren't that good, how good do they have to be to make Unlimited a good deal? You know what I mean? If they're 1% good, Brian, eat 100 of them. Brian, did you know they make a, they make a sandwich out of them now, Brian, where they'll put super sloppy pizza in the middle of the breadstick. They'll cut the breadstick open, put the pizza fixings right in there, Brian. I'm about now, to- you know what? I'm on Team Justin. Who the fuck are you, Who do you Brian? think you Get fucking off. are, Brian? Who are you? Who are you? Brian, you've got to develop an affinity. I'm sorry I've been so hard on you. I just haven't eaten bread for five days and I would fucking crush them. I would do despicable things. You would walk to the box office and demand a refund for the fucking spectacle. It'd be like when King Kong frees himself on stage and he's just eating people. Like that would be your reaction to my housing Unlimited. I, they, I hope they are unlimited because that it will be my consumption. We thought right. they were unlimited, but it turns out there was a limited There's number, a limited number, earth, number of them. Okay. You've got to develop an affinity for some place that gets even more nastier and more ribald than Fazoli's. And uh, can we think of any? Chuck yeah. E. Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> That's too fun. There's lots of great games. That's fun stuff there. Um, what is... Golden Corral, options. Options, very good. Hey, we don't, guys, this is a podcast that has a segment in it called Munch Squad. We don't need reminders of what (laughs) bad restaurants are. What if just the next time in anticipation for this, you just bought a bunch of frozen breadsticks and you're like, oh, Fazoli's, I've got it. It ain't delivery, it's De Brian. And you just like, open the freezer. Brian, does that help? That's very helpful. Thank wow. you. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Excellent. We, we did basically just yell at you for six minutes for I'm not liking the bad food <laughs> at Fazoli's. Brian, but. I'm sorry I said who the fuck are you. You're yeah. great. I'm sorry. That was mean. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my name what is What do you Ryan. have to say about Fazoli's? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted. Begin again. I apologize. Hi. My name is Ryan. Um, Hi, my Ryan. pronouns are he, him. Hello. Okay, so I am going to driving school currently to, mm. you know, learn how to drive. Nice. Like sure. a normal performing citizen. Well, one of the so. top things to do at driving school, <laughs> I've always thought. Exactly. It's that and find yourself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I fell asleep like mid class one day. <laughs> that is. Oh, not mid class. Not mid driving. Oh, okay. We were all on that page, right? Okay, okay, good. Right, you're fine. Go on. Anyways, I passed. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I will too. Um, but I woke up and there was just a mint in my mouth. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't c- consume a mint before. Beforehand. I assume so, Ryan, or you wouldn't ask the question. Well, yeah. Ryan, we've been doing this for 60 minutes. You can't introduce such challenging ideas to support the podcast. There I'm was so not sorry, a mint. Justin. Okay, let's dig deep. Okay. Are there other details you wish to share about this mystery before I call Hercule Poirot? <laughs> <laughs> to use his little gray sails? Well, okay, I was considering, like, confronting the class, like, hey, guys. <laughs> Who did this? Who did this? 
Thank you for the free men. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. So, Ryan, what happened? What happened, Ryan? <laughs> but I didn't um, because. That would be a horrible, like, no one would fess up to putting a mint in my mouth while I was sleeping. I would. <laughs> 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 For me, I'd be like, yeah, from downtown. Yeah, I nailed that. Bu- I yelled buckets. It was awesome. <laughs> Were you sleeping like this? <sighs> there's no, okay, no, there's no position you can lay in that invite someone to place a mint in your mouth. No, 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 I'm not saying correct. I want to clarify that for everyone yes. real quick. <laughs> let me, okay, let me rephrase. Everybody's cheering like this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. If it did happen, it would be a problem. That would invite some sort of evil mint bandit to try to say, this is not a good kid doing this. This is a, <gasps> is there a driving school class clown? <laughs> if so, don't let them on the road. But it's not <laughs> even a class clown. It's a class, like, pushy oral hygienist. <laughs> like... It's not clownish behavior. No clown has ever been like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Your fingers die in my goddamn mouth for real. <laughs> they did. Sometimes, is that strawberry? <laughs> sometimes I surprise even myself. Ryan, are these mints that you consume on a regular basis? This brand of mint? No. <laughs> Could you place it? Could you place the mint type? Yeah. Was it Mentos? Was it a, okay, hold on. Wait, let's just uh, 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 uh. Let's at least establish this. Size of mint. Are we talking about a Tic Tac or are we talking about like a fucking candy cane? Search for threats in, what do we got? <laughs> yes, I woke up with a whole candy cane <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> oh, um, now it's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's like one of those little white, like swirly ones. Or an Altoid or like a no, ring. Let's spend five more minutes figuring out the yeah, type like of Yeah, like the lifesaver Okay, shape. Like a lifesaver, like a, like a cert, like a, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that cracks this whole thing wide open. <laughs> you asked. Good, I'm so glad. Okay, everyone, put your heads down. <laughs> if you are the one who put a mint <laughs> in Ryan's mouth, raise your hand. I won't be mad. <laughs> Seeing a lot of hands go up. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this was a heist. All right, Ryan. <laughs> Is it possible that they were paying it forward, but they didn't really understand the point? This will be, is it possible that this will be nice? (laughs) I was about to ask if that helps, but I know it doesn't. So let's part peacefully and amicably. (laughs) Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. Paul's got mints for you. Paul's got a cruel mockery. Paul is offering a mint. Paul has made this a, a an ARG. That makes it all better, Paul. Yeah, that's very now nice. Now that Ryan Paul. knows hey, where those mints, mints around. came from. Everyone enjoy. Yeah, some Paul's Paul mints. great. Paul, by the way, do you still have my mint container that still has all my road ecstasy in it? Oh, no! <laughs> Not to be confused with your home ecstasy for home use. Hey, what's up? Hi, my name's Maya. Hi, I'm Maya. Uh, you, she, her, trans rights. What's Hello. up? Maya said trans rights. Maya, I would just want to thank you. You've been last in line, but you've been so visibly supportive of all of our question asked. <laughs> you it's been you've been so you even raised moment. your hand when I asked who put them in. And Maya's, <laughs> and Ryan's Which would have been quite the fucking twist. They're right behind you. <laughs> it was Maya. <laughs> Anyways, my question is, well, I put them in someone's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, Maya, to, to take away from your moment. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little drunk. They put, like, six shots in the Jack and Coke out there. Oh, hey, damn. damn. That's, My town. That's so weird. I asked the bartender to make it strong as we were walking past because they said, I told him it's funnier if the... <laughs> it absolutely okay. is. Thank you. All right. What's your question, Maya? So, my little sister is extremely popular in high school. She's cool. friends with, like, everybody. Okay. I showed her Jinko jeans at first. Right. Hell yes. And she screamed that they were ugly. Okay. Oh, All right. Uh, pearls before swine, right, Maya? Absolutely. Did she say, those are the fazolis of pants? <laughs> <laughs> Not incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> that plus, there's lots of places to hide free bricks. <laughs> yes, that's true. Sure. How big are the legs? Mm, uh, they're uh, uh, limited. 30, 30 to 40 breadsticks at least. Okay, so Jenkos were a bust. So I showed her acid wash jeans, mm-hmm. and she was 
into it. Okay. Yeah. Right. She's got two eyes and a heart. How, <laughs> how can I get her to bring it back into style to influence all her friends at school to bring acid wash jeans back? For the, why, so that you may wear acid wash jeans again? Absolutely. Okay. My father-in-law okay. makes the best acid wash jeans you've ever seen. Okay, so I see what we're doing here. All it's right, a, Maya. Barry, delete a little bit. You it, got bespoke acid wash jeans on top? It's a profit <laughs> deal. You're trying to create a, a market for these great jeans. <laughs> my, exactly. My, okay. my dad's got barrels and barrels of jeans acid. <laughs> he can acid wash anything. <laughs> Not just jeans. He acid wash the dog. This jeans... <laughs> He has to wash Ronda Rabbit. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the thing. She can't wear them. Absolutely not. What she needs to do is show pictures of them to other people and say, I wish I had a pair of these. Because if she <laughs> wears be like, them. doesn't your dad fucking make these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't get high on your own supply. <laughs> what, wear my dad's last year wash jeans? I'm cool. <laughs> My legs have to maintain a very specific pH balance. <laughs> Wearing your own acid wash jeans is a perversion. My yeah. father-in-law can attest. Um, so, but here's the thing. I don't wear acid wash jeans all the time, and I don't influence people to wear acid wash jeans. So Why what's not? step two? Why not? Why not? I don't really give Do a shit. Think- <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that the one influences the other? That if you maybe wore them more often, you would influence more people? Yeah, bud. I do think that there would be, at least at that point, a causal relationship between the two things. What if you stood up right now and suddenly you had on acid washing? <laughs> and just under the table, we've had a slow drip of acid onto Griffin's leg. No, what's been slowly dripping onto my legs the whole time we've been doing this show is blood and cerebrospinal fluid. <laughs> You could just have her start a rumor that all the big streamers are wearing acid wash jeans underneath there. Yeah. Like if Ninja stood up and he was just wearing acid wash jeans and then some other ones that I'm sure have names stood up too and all the streamers had acid wash jeans. I don't know how she's going to make that happen. Now, actually. <laughs> now that I say it, it sounds stupid. This is Ninja's a- got his lucky acid wash jeans under, on, under his yeah, whatever he wears. Exactly. Under his Unlike it's everything possible. else we've said so far, this isn't going to help, but... This is just a question I'm now wondering about for your father-in-law. Yes. You got to set a pretty specific timer for acid washing jeans, right? Because if you go too long, no more jeans. <laughs> they're, they're just white yeah. jeans. There's got to be a boy where you're like, oh, did I get those? Damn it. <laughs> then you've got jeans washed acid. <laughs> and no one's going to buy that. No one's going to buy that. <laughs> hey, Maya, I, does that help? Yeah, 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 fair. It's the best we deserve. Thank Thank you, Maya. You You can go ahead and bring those house lights down. We appreciate you. Um, We did not deserve the Taft Theater to be full of human beings again seven months after we were here, and you all still did, and you're so sweet. Uh, We didn't want to travel uh, very far because Travis has just had a new Cincinnatian. A new Cincinnati baby. Um, so we're so thrilled to be here with you. We'll be here again tomorrow night. Um, this is also was a great kickoff to the laughter and love tour. What a wonder, wonderful, tour. delightful tour kickoff. Um, I actually think we still have a few tickets for tomorrow if y'all want to come back, if you're not already. Oh, come. y'all, have we're, we announced what tomorrow's Taz is? No. Y'all, we, it's a fucking, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's, um, it's like a new game system. It's a new game system created by me, Justin McElroy. <laughs> I've never, um, I've never done it before, and it's going to be a little bit um, silly, so make sure you don't miss that. It's going to be quite good. Uh, I no, also, it, I, it might not be good. It will be something. It'll be a thing. Uh, I also want to th- th- thank you to our kind of laughter and love decor here with our glasses from uh, Amanda. Amanda, Thanks, Amanda, our visitor, who just like bought these and flew with them, which I imagine seeing that go through x-ray must have raised a couple of flags. But here's the thing. I am unironically enjoying I quite enjoy it. Yes, these are quite nice. Uh, thank you to our, our families. Thank you to Sawbones for oh, opening sure. for us. Hey, no problem. 
Thank uh, you to our, our daddy, Clinton McElroy. Clint McElroy, thanks. Thank you to... Uh, to Paul. To Paul Saboran. Our trusted... Uh, our, our trusted... Did you thank uh, John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use for theme song and departure, departure off the album, album putting the days to bed? No, I didn't. Uh, we uh, are all going to be, uh, or at least I personally, am going to be sprinting back to the hotel to help put my child uh, in bed, uh, which I am... I have 15 seconds to wrap this up before I reach the time where I told Rachel I would be back at the hotel, so... Now, and uh, I, I got to come up with a game system, so... Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, we will not be like hanging out after the show, but we will be here tomorrow to blow your asses away. Uh, here is a but no big promises that I have to deliver on. Right, no, no press. Here, do get ready to see the most amazing thing you've <laughs> ever seen. Okay, this one was sent in by so many people for the last like month or so. So let's just like do it. Uh, thanks everybody. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call uh, Billiam asks. <laughs> How was Batman alive if his parents died? <laughs> so. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.